Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Dearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to this brand new day. Yes, indeed. I've been outside, and for the Shelton, Washington, Wither, Plague Rat, and Spider Report, I have been outside. It's going to be a very hot, sunny day. There's no clouds that I could see. I mean, things like that can change instantly, so who knows? But I think it's going to be warm. But for right now, it's a, a blue sky out there, so thumbs up. Plague Rat Report, uh, again, since I have to go walkies, I go walkies, and that's fine. You can, you don't have to wear a mask if there's not a bunch of people and it's just outside. So when I go by people, I mean, I socially distance, I'll cross streets. I'm not too worried about that. It's like when I'm in Safeway with recycled air, with tight people, and not, not outside. That's when it's bad, when people are standing, you know, at the self-checkout center and just taking their masks off or pulling their masks down or talking on the phone as they go through the store with their masks off and down. Uh, life is life, though. You gotta do what you gotta do. And, of course, on the spider report, I feel bad. I feel bad. The big old garden spider was in her orb over there. Now, again, I don't know if it's anywhere close to the spider that I had seen before. It's much larger now, much whiter. It's not that orangey brown color that it was before, so it's probably a different spider. But point being, I was fixing some stuff up and I gave a toss of one thing onto a stack of other things that I have on top of a hamster cage over there. And oh, I could see it as it happened. There was an anchor web that came down onto the hamster cage and locked onto something on the hamster lid cage. So when I threw this thing, it went boom, wow, and the whole web just came apart. And the spider in panic just abandoned the web, clung to the wall, and now I can't see her, so she's probably back just behind the sheet of paper that I have taped to the window back there. There's a line of paper that goes across the window where the, where the sun tracks across because otherwise it comes through the trees and right into my eyes. So I take paper to the wall. But she's probably behind that and I hope she's going to be okay. I felt horrible when I saw that I had destroyed her web. Still, I mean, hopefully she's just going to make a new one. Yay. <laughs> Past that though, real quick, this is something that I had been thinking of ever since I talked about it yesterday. I talked about the differences in the game like Ghost of Tsushima and Dying Dead Island and the game Outward. Because in the game Dead Island and the game Ghost of Tsushima, if you die, you will see, in Ghost of Tsushima, you see the consequences of your failure. You get murdered. And then they start you again, right back where the challenge begins. Now, if it's a random challenge, like yesterday, I had three situations where I got wiped out. And it was all in the same section of road. But it was a minor random encounter. And so the encounter was a little bit different each time, but it was still an encounter there. But it started me right there. And I mentioned how in the game Outward, when you die, you don't die. It just knocks you out, drags you halfway across the map, and then puts you in a beat-up state in a safe place where you can recover, pick up your junk, and then you have to pay for the consequences of your failure. I mean, the consequences are you're taken out of the bad situation, and you might even get some potions and good stuff out of it. But you're still halfway across the map. You gotta relocate where you were if you want to go back. You have to find out where you are, because it doesn't show you on the map. So there are consequences, but the difference is Ghost of Tsushima especially is a narrative-driven game. It is story-driven from beginning to end. It has a strong damn story from the very moment it starts. And when you go to the journal, on your quest journal, each of the things aren't listed as just, you know, a quest, something you have to do. No, they are individual tales. It's a story. Now, it might be a short story that's over quickly. One of the things that happened, I was riding along on my horse. This fellow comes running up and says, the Mongols are at my house. They've kidnapped my son and child. Can you help me? I am a coward. I cannot fight. 
you go to the house, you kill the Mongols, you follow the traces of evidence, his wife and child are gone, their bodies thrown into the river. It's a very short story, but they are listed as tales, as individual stories in your quest book. So yeah, it's not a an open world, really. There are open world parts where you can just ignore the story and do other things, but it's not an actual open world game. It has a story to tell, and it makes sense that it just starts you back at the beginning of that challenge. In a narrative sense, it makes sense. Whereas Outward, that game has a story, but it's kind of like the Elder Scrolls things and that you can just ignore it if you want. You can just ignore it and do whatever you want. So it's not story driven. It's exploration driven. So yeah, in that case, uh, you deal with the consequences of your failure because it's not a story where it depends on you do this, you start, you face the odds, and you defeat the bad people. No, it's you're racing around looking at stuff. You wandered into something too heavy duty for you. Whack! You got your head crushed. You wake up somewhere else going, oh, maybe I shouldn't go there. Whereas games like even Dead Island, which is still story-driven, it's mission-based, it makes sense to start you right back at the beginning of that challenge because you're telling a story. And the consequences of failure are just maybe a minute of going, ah, as you wait for the reload, and then you go and you do the challenge. So yeah, it's old school versus modern and narrative versus exploration. And that was one of the big things I happened to be thinking of last night as I was walking, so thumbs up. Oh, and just a real quick, I, uh, oh, it, it doesn't make sense. I was gonna talk about how, I, I know I'm uh, non-neurotypical because of my depression and such, and I've, I mentioned yesterday or the day before, I can't even remember which, about how I was rocking in my chair with behaviors. I share a lot of behaviors with more extreme, non-neurotypical types, but I'm, I mean, I've never taken a test. I, yeah, because of my depression, because of a whole bunch of stuff, I am non-neurotypical, but, there's it's not a black and white sort of thing everything is a spectrum everybody is some form of neurotypical to neurodivergent it's 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 all shades and so yeah because of my depression and and ADHD and some other things you know it's unfortunately non-neurotypical so I wasn't all that clear yesterday and I'm still not being thoroughly clear now because we have blind spots as we talk about stuff where we think we're being as clear as crystal but because of our blind spots we can't tell that we're actually just muttering and painting pictures in mud as far as anyone else can tell so I think I'm being clear, and hopefully I am, and hopefully I'm not just finger painting in mud while you're going, I have no idea what he's trying to say. Still though, I have also been talking in comments, because I talk about this part frequently. I vlog not because I think I'm fascinating. I mean, I'm in love with the sound of my own voice, so on that part, yeah, I'll share. <laughs> but I don't vlog because I think I'm fascinating. I'm a nobody. I'm just a 57-year-old guy who's slowly been sinking through life, and that's just things. I vlog because I'm a talker. And if I can't talk, if I can't talk my stuff out, if I can't get it out of here, run it through and out my mouth, I'm stuck. And so I was not doing well before I started to vlog. Even though doing my channel, even doing various videos, I wasn't vlogging and it was helping, not a ton. But once I started vlogging, oh my gosh, 
my brain started doing so much better and it got me to the point where I could reach out and ask for help, which got me into therapy. I don't vlog just because I'm in love with the sound of my own voice. I don't vlog just because I think I have interesting ideas and want to share them with people. It's mainly, as I've said before, and why I do this and will continue to do it, for my mental health, just to keep my head working properly. I have no one IRL I can talk to. So being able to talk to people online through chat and being able to talk to people online by vlogging, I can get this stuff out of my head and out here so I can process it. Thank you all so very, very much. It is awesome and greatly appreciated to no end. Definitely a thumbs up. Now, let me see what else I have on here. Oh, yes, there was this real quick. Uh, I've started taking less magnesium. I'm just going to take one tablet a day because... I don't know how it works this way on potassium, but I can understand maybe too much magnesium would cause cramping. If you don't have enough potassium, your muscles will cramp. If you have too much potassium, your muscles can't contract. So I don't know how having too much stuff that makes you go bleh can make you go Ugh. I don't know how that works. I just be, I mean, especially my wife had to take potassium a lot. And when she at, would accidentally take too much and we'd have to take her to the hospital, she could barely move because her muscles just would not contract. So, thumbs up. Just thought I'd mention that. Because this morning, I still dressed myself on top of my bed, but it was a lot less painful and my muscles did not seem like they're ready to go. I had zero issues with my right leg and only minor issues with my, yeah, the right leg was the, the one that's, you know, binary, cramped or not. The left leg is the one that can cramp, but slowly from the knee down and things went well. Definitely a thumbs up on that. So less potassium, not less potassium, less magnesium. And I'm going to give that a shot. It's, it's, what, it's what you do. You take some and you see how it works. You either adjust by going up or adjust by going down with your dosage and you see what your body does. And when you see if you've gone too far, you back off. That's what I'm doing. It's science. <laughs> Definitely a thumbs up. So that's a good thing. I'm just real quick, because I am trying to not be political, and it is stuff, and this morning I sat down and I talked a lot with Russian timing, which was so why I'm so behind here, because I immediately got up at 4 o'clock, had to go to the bathroom, got up, you know, was ready, sat down here at like 4.30, and immediately started typing, didn't get anything done until like five minutes before I started recording. <clears throat> but one of the things that's with riots and protests and it's like why don't people protest quietly the one big thing about this is and i'm just going to do it real quick is in 2011 there was the occupy wall street movement huge protests huge protests in a lot of major cities now if you had heard of them and forgot about them well i'm glad to remind you if you had heard of them but just hadn't thought of them for a while Remember this, because that's nine years ago this happened. What changed from their protests? Uh, there have been no changes. Things have gotten worse since then. Now, what's the big difference? Uh, they were very quiet, and they were polite, and they were tidy, and they didn't make a mess. They didn't disrupt anything during their protests. And now, nine years later, uh, most people have forgotten about them, and they're gone. Protests are from people who have a grievance, and if it's not being addressed, they will make everybody else know that it's a grievance. And if you don't, you're just going to get paved over, whitewashed, and gone. Like Occupy Wall Street. And that's as far as I'm going to go. <laughs>
definitely a thumbs up on that. Oh, good golly, Miss Molly. I have a whole bunch of other things written down. Like, I've been playing the game Brutal Doom. I mean, the mod for Doom, Brutal Doom. Uh, the guy that makes Brutal Doom and all those various things has been basically kicked out of the Doom modding community because he's a real scum. Holocaust denier, racist, just horrific. He has been disavowed from the, the mainstream Doom modding community and people say, look, if you want to play a good game, play one of these other things. Please do not play this mod. Do not give him any support. Which is so disappointing because that was a good mod, but I'm not going to support someone who's, well, fascist scum. And I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab, but I'm going to thank 20 to 25 people for having left me a comment. I'm not reading the comments right now. I'm just thanking you for having left a comment. Definitely a thumbs up on that. If I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended. I'm an American English speaker, and even though I count in American Sign Language on the fingers of this hand with my depression, fibro, ADHD, still depression, grief, and mourning, I'm sometimes lucky I can remember anything at all. My depression and such is getting better. My memory is getting better day by day, but one day I am going to hit a, a functional limit. But we have by Chris. Well, hello, and <laughs> you keep changing your name. Never, thumbs up and thank you. Gracie May, 306, thumbs up. Astro Gaming, greatly appreciated. Sarster13, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, thank you. Goat Pack, thumbs up. And then there's something, and I don't know if it's pronounced Cyrillic or Chirillic. One day I'm actually going to Google that and find out, but it, it's the Russian lettering. Uh, thank you very, very much. And then there is Cool Kea, thumbs up. And we have, ooh. My heart to skip beats. Billy Bob Joe animations, definitely a thumbs up. And Russian timing, good to see you in the comments. Maki, M A W C K Y, uh, I do not, uh, and I talk about it a lot, why? So there's Noble Society Minecraft Team Recruiting, thumbs up and thank you. D4IM, thumbs up. Kathy Kiss Cat, good to see you in the comments. We have sad days. Yeah, I understand. Luv Karomi, thumbs up and thank you. Miranda Loza, greatly appreciate it. Tanya, three A's at the end. <laughs> Ethan Gameplays, thumbs up and thank you. Tootie Plutie, <laughs> I like the name. Mohammed Fares, I sure hope I'm close. Corn Beef Hash, thumbs up, and I, I, I'll see about that. Roach Dog Jr., thumbs up and thank you. We have Elder Wolf 569 thumbs up. Good to see you in the comments, and thank you for the info. And last but not least, Sebastian Ferris. Greatly appreciated. Each and every one of you, you get me out of my head, into the world, dealing with real people, making me be dramatic. You can tell I am out of my depression trough just by how animated I am. Thumbs up on that. Anyway, though, yeah, I got this video. I have the second half of a Minecraft video. Definitely cool. So my day is going to be busy, but hopefully not too busy. There's things I want to record off my Xbox. There's stuff I want to record off my PS4. So we'll see how it works out. There's so many good games on, on both consoles. And all my old consoles, I want to play games and record those and show people. I like... A lot of the retro older stuff just because I grew grew up I mean I didn't grow up with this stuff I was born in 1962 so in 1992 you know I was already 72 82 92 I was 30 years old I was almost 38 when I got my first console my PlayStation 1 but since then eh. but I've been playing games my whole life I mean my father bought us a Pong machine when it first came out, then an Atari VCS. I spent I don't know how many hundreds of dollars and quarters in the arcade machines growing up. And then I got a computer in 1982. I have been involved with electronic entertainment and the internet since it all cropped up. So cool. I was just looking out there, dead bug on the wall. So thumbs up. Anyway though, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, my friend, and that is a very good thing. And of course, please wear a mask. It works. Protect others. Show you care. Practice social distancing, especially when you're inside a recycled air place, even though there's not a whole lot you can do because of the whole recycled air thing. Excuse me.
practice self-care. Oh, it's so hard on everybody's mental health during these times. You really got to take care of yourself, definitely. And of course, Black Lives Matter and justice for everybody that the jack-booted, brown-shirted thugs keep brutalizing and murdering.